let's go. In this video, I'll explain a swerve test, also known as a VSB14 LT2 swerve test maneuver that is required for vehicles to be engineered when certain modifications are performed. I'll explain when the test is required, run through how we test different types of vehicles, tricks and tips to give your vehicle the best chance of passing, and when testing isn't required. This video will be broken up into segments, with the timestamps now on your screen, so you can jump to the part of the video you need. What is a swerve test? The test procedure consists of driving a vehicle through a set track, which simulates a lane change maneuver. The intent of this test procedure is to subjectively determine the road handling ability and handling characteristics of the vehicle after modification. This test procedure is applicable to vehicles with a gross vehicle mass of up to 3,500 kilograms. This is important to understand, as if your vehicle's GVM is 3,501 kg or above, the swerve test isn't required. The certifier only needs to conduct and write up a subjective driving report of the vehicle's characteristics and road handling ability. The testing must be conducted under the guidance of a light vehicle engineering signatory, authorised in the state or territory that the certificate will be completed. The lane change track must be negotiated by a skilled driver with automatic road testing experience. Since these are subjective tests, the vehicle owner cannot be the driver for the test. And it is not only sufficient for just a successful test with no cones knocked over, but the driver must also be confident that the vehicle is safe to drive and sign paperwork to say as such. The vehicle is driven from the initial lane to another parallel lane and back again to the original lane. The length of the lane is the same for all vehicles, but with the width of the lane varies depending on the width of the vehicle under test. This test procedure in Australia is based on the international standard ISO 3888-1, known as the double lane change manoeuvre, but not to be confused with ISO 3888-2, obstacle avoidance test, also known as the moose test. Both of these standards originate from Europe in the 1970s. The main difference between a swerve test and a moose test is the cones are set a lot closer together in a moose test. The test is performed with a seated person in each seat and weights in the luggage area, and the vehicle only needs to be able to navigate the course without dislodging any cones at 72 km an hour or 45 miles per hour to pass. Where in Australia, the course is set a lot further apart for the increase in test speed. The vehicle is tested weighted and unweighted with only a driver inside while testing. The maximum speed is dependent on what category of vehicle is being tested. When is the test required? In New South Wales, an LT2 swerve test is required when any body lift up to 50mm is performed. When a vehicle's total height exceeds 75mm higher than its original height, this also includes the tyres, so a 50mm or 2 inch suspension lift and a 50mm or 2 inch larger tyre will increase the vehicle's total height by 75mm in total. It may also be required to the discretion of the certifier for some extended wheelbase and steering design change modifications to confirm the vehicle can still operate as original. The vehicle being tested must be fully insured for its market value, not including modifications, by either insurance supplied by the owner or insurance organised by the engineer. Wind speed on the day shall not exceed 3 metres a second, which is 11 kilometres an hour, and the course may not be wet from rain. The course must be flat in each direction, have no loose material, and the service must have an anti-skid properties. The vehicle is inspected and driven before the testing for any mechanical issues, compliance issues, tyre pressures, and to confirm all test requirements are correct. The overall length of the test track must be 125 metres. The cones used and the distance between the cones is specified in the ISO standard and VSB14 section LT2. The course is set up into three segments or garages with the distance in the direction of the test and the offset of the centre segment the same for all vehicles, with the segment widths based on the width of the vehicle being tested. In the vehicle, we wear safety PPE and helmet and gloves. There is a GPS speedometer for accurate speed control. I also use a tilt meter and sometimes have a V-Box data logger for testing as well. For the first stage of testing, the vehicle needs to be at its tar or empty weight, except the fuel tank must be filled to 90% of its capacity. The driver's weight must exceed 68 kilograms, and all standard equipment such as spare tyre and toolkit must be installed, or additional weights are added. This is known as the vehicle's test mass 1. The second stage of testing is the same as test mass 1, 
plus 68 kilos times the number of seats in the passenger compartment calculated for the weight of the driver and 13.6 kilogram times the number of seats evenly distributed over the luggage compartment. These are the New South Wales requirements from LT2 as some states use 7 kilograms times the seating for the luggage area. Loading of the weights needs to be secure as to not move around during the test and can be on the vehicle's floor to keep the weight as low as possible. These are the requirements for passenger vehicles. For goods carrying vehicles, utes, vans and some four-wheel drives, it's as per the test mass 1 plus sufficient weight evenly distributed over the goods carrying area up to the vehicle's GVM. Sometimes seating or body modifications can change the vehicle's ADR category and if this happens, the resulting category test requirements are followed. The first attempt needs to be at or under 80 km an hour. With some high lifted vehicles, I will start at 60 km an hour. With each successful run, vehicle speed is raised incrementally to the driver's discretion, normally every 10 km an hour. 110 km an hour for all MA, MB and MC category vehicles and passenger cars, or 100 km an hour for all other vehicles. A successful run at both test masses for the speed required for that vehicle will result in the vehicle passing the LT2 swerve test. Any failed runs, we just set up the cones and try again. It sometimes takes me a few runs to get to know the vehicle and know how hard you can push it. Any other weighted items should be removed to give the vehicle the best chance of passing the test. It is also recommended to remove anything attached to the roof, like rooftop tents, jacks and racks, as this raises the centre of gravity and can affect the test. Make sure the tyre pressures are correct for your vehicle and the brakes are adjusted if they are of an adjustable type, including the handbrake. Although the braking system is tested in LT2, it is a safety requirement. The cost of a swerve test can vary, but normally costs between $2,000 and $2,500, depending on the vehicle. Now this is a lot of money, but most of it is for insurance, wages, equipment and track hire. I'll end this video with some failed attempts.